Hello. So this video is going to be a quick review. We've already seen some identities, equalities that are always true. And in this video, we're going to quickly remind ourselves of the identities that we've seen. Or at least I say quickly, we'll see how long this takes. We have seen, sorry, I'd like to keep my head in, uh, in view, but we have seen the Pythagorean identity. Maybe I should call this the Pythagorean identities, plural, there are actually three of them. The really famous one is that the sine squared plus the cosine squared equals one. But there's also one plus the tangent squared equals the secant squared. And one plus the cotangent squared equals the cosecant squared. And those are the Pythagorean identities. Um, this Pythagorean identity gets used a lot. At least it gets used a lot in calculus. I know that a lot of you are in education majors that don't require that, but um, in some contexts like calculus, it's extremely important. Come on, Zoom, work with me here. Um. These other two trig identities show up less often. I won't say they never show up, though. Again, the, the main application I can think of is calculus, which is maybe not so interesting for most of you. But at least this first Pythagorean identity, you should just know and be able to recite. I mean, we've already used it in this course. We're going to keep using it in this course. So what other identities do we know? I mean, this is the only thing where we've given it the... No, that's not true, actually. I was going to say, this is the only thing that we've actually called an identity. That is not the case. We have already talked about the co-function identities. Identity is the uh the reason i started to make that error is that the textbook for whatever reason does not mention the co-function identities in this section, but since we are summarizing the identities we already know, the cosine of x is the sine of x minus 
of pi over two minus x. And because there are so many of them, I'm going to briefly pause this video and scroll the rest in while you do not have to watch me. The next set of identities that we've already seen before, we didn't I believe you is the word identity. But we observed that some of the trig functions are even and other trig functions are odd. In particular, the cosine is even. And the secant is even. Um, the way you remember this, I mean, the cosine, you just have to learn it. But then for the secant, you remember that the secant is one divided by the cosine. So the secant inherits the cosine's evenness. And then the other trig functions are odd. And again, this isn't, when we first made this statement, we didn't call it an identity, but it is an equality that is true for every value of x. So it is, an identity, whether we used that word or not. So these are the even and odd identity is. So what's going to come next is kind of, it feels a little weird grouping these in with identities, because what's going to come next are really just definitions. I mean, how did we define the secant of x? Now we called it one over the cosine of x. So this is the definition of the secant, but it's also an equality that's true for every value of x. So you can think of this as being an identity if you want to. Then the cosecant. the cotangent, and we could also write that the cosine is one divided by the secant, the sine is one divided by the cosecant, and the tangent is one divided by the cotangent. Then we can also, sort of in the same vein, not mean to make my face bigger but I won't fight with this right now. Um, in the same vein, we defined the tangent as the sine over the cosine. 
But again, you can call this an identity because, well, because it is. It's an equality that's always true. I mean, it, the reason that it's always true is kind of vacuous. We are, we defined it to always be true, but it is always true, nevertheless. So these I believe, are all of the identities we've seen so far in this class. Yep, just double checked, and that is correct. So in the next video, we'll finally get to the actual topic um, of the um, of the textbook section and talk about verifying trigonometric identities.